This video is going to be about stroke volume variation, or SVV, which is a measure of fluid status. So stroke volume variation uh, can go by different names, but really it's all the same concept of how does the fluid status in your superior vena cava interact with your lungs to produce a pleth wave. So stroke volume variation is what we're going to talk about, and that talks about an art line waveform, but this can also sort of be translated to pleth variability index, which is your pulse ox, or systolic blood pressure variation. So how does your systolic blood pressure vary based on your fluid status, or pulse pressure variation? which looks as how does your systolic and diastolic vary in relation to each other in reference to your fluid status. So when we look at stroke volume variation, it's much more accurate in a patient who's vented and without arrhythmias. And we'll discuss why that's the case. But first, let's talk through how does respiration affect your stroke volume in a vented patient. So first, the ventilator delivers a big positive pressure breath, and the lungs expand outward, and they put pressure against your superior vena cava. If your superior vena cava doesn't have very much fluid in it because you're dehydrated, that pressure from your lungs will compress that floppy dehydrated vena cava. And so not as much fluid can enter the right side of your heart. So your preload in the right side of your heart is going to be lower. So you're going to have less blood pumped through the lungs and back to the left side of the heart. There's going to be left, less blood available in the left side of your heart and therefore less blood pumped into your aorta. So your pl pleth wave on your art line will look little, something like that. So let's say you're still dehydrated, but now you're exhaling. During exhalation on a ventilator, the lungs compress, and so less pressure is put on your floppy vena cava. So even though the vena cava is dehydrated and floppy, now there's no pressure against it, and so it's wide open. So the beats that occur during exhalation will have a great filling pressure. All that fluid will go through the lungs back to the left side of the heart, and then get pumped out the aorta. So that beat is going to be high. So this is our first beat here, and this is our second beat during exhalation. So we've got inhalation here, and we've got exhalation here. And I'll continue like this, and you can sort of tell where in the respiration phase you are by looking at your art line. So the variation between beats during inhalation and beats during exhalation is called your stroke volume variation, and it's a percentage. How much percent did it change by? And 10 to 15 percent is generally considered a normal amount to vary by. So normal stroke volume variation is 10 to 15 percent. So it's normal for your lungs to put some pressure on your vena cava during inspiration and then reduce that pressure during expiration when you're on a ventilator. However, if your vena cava is floppy and dehydrated, it can affect your stroke volume by more than 10 to 15 percent. So 10 to 15 percent would be normal, and this might be something like 30 percent, versus a normal person's might look like this. During inspiration and expiration, and it looks pretty close. That's because in a normal person, when they're vented, 
their lungs do put some pressure on their vena cava, but the vena cava is full of fluid and it's really resilient to compression. So it might compress a tiny bit, but not that much. And so regardless of inspiration or expiration, the preload to your ventricles is pretty consistent. And so your stroke volume is pretty consistent and your pleth is pretty consistent. So you have low stroke volume variation. So the easiest way to remember this is to work through it and understand the forces between your lung and your vena cava and how that preload affects cardiac output. The other way to memorize it is high is dry. So a high percent stroke volume variation higher than 15% means that you're dry and you should give fluid. So as promised, let's talk about why you need to be vented and not have arrhythmias in order to have a reliable measure of stroke volume variation. Well first, when you're vented, this whole concept is based on how much pressure your lung puts on your vena cava and how that can be a reflection of your fluid status. So when a patient is vented, they're getting relatively consistent tidal volumes, relatively consistent PEEP, and relatively consistent pressure against their vena cava. So therefore, we can look at your stroke volume with each beat and how that compares to respiration, and we can make a measurement based on that. If someone is spontaneously ventilating, their lungs still push pressure against their vena cava, but sometimes we take a real big breath, and sometimes we take a little breath, and sometimes we yawn or take a sigh, and it's really hard because normally, if you take a big breath or a little breath, that will affect the pressure on your vena cava, which will affect your stroke volume. So in a spontaneously breathing patient, there's more stroke volume variation normally. And so it's hard to tell what's caused by the floppy dehydrated vena cava and what is caused by inconsistencies in your tidal volume. Why do we need someone without arrhythmias? Well, if someone has an arrhythmia, they're going to have inconsistent filling times. So you've all probably seen this in someone who has PVCs. I know in the ICU I've watched people's EKGs and seen a normal beat, a normal beat, and then a PVC, and then a normal beat. And I'll look at their pulse ox or their art line, and it'll look normal, normal, and then it'll be like, oop, didn't tolerate that one very well, normal. And that's what that is. That is stroke volume variation. There's a variation between this beat and this beat because the cardiac output during the PVC was poor compared to a normal beat. So that patient will have high stroke volume variation because of their arrhythmia. And so high stroke volume variation can't tell you anything about your volume status. We see the same thing with atrial fibrillation. They have inconsistencies in their rate, and so each beat might have a different filling time and filling pressure, which will place it at a different place on the Frank Starling curve, and so they'll have different contractility and cardiac output with each beat because of the arrhythmia. Therefore, you can't use SUV as a measure of fluid status with an arrhythmia. So thanks for watching. I hope that all made sense. Let me know what you think.